Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Your Mark on the World show. I'm your host, Devin Thorpe, and we're excited today to have with us Ann McIntosh. She's the founder and president of Safe and Clear, a remarkable new technology for uh, surgical masks that could really revolutionize the world, especially for those patients who are deaf or hard of hearing. So stay tuned for this great episode. Welcome to Your Mark on the World, bringing you another change maker with champion of social good, Devin D. Thorpe. This episode is made possible via the support of our sponsors, including Johnson & Johnson's Caring Crowd. And welcome to the show. We're thrilled to have you. Thank you. It's great to be here today. We, we really thank you for taking the time, and we're excited to learn more about Safe and Clear and your new surgical masks. Uh, why don't you show us one and tell, you, tell us uh, how you came up with this idea? My husband and I, after we got married, we decided to start our family. So we got pregnant and um, we're getting ready to go to the hospital and have a baby the good old fashioned way, as I like to say it. And um, after about 25 hours of labor, we didn't have any bundle of joy in our arms yet. And the OBGYN said, I think we're going to need to do an emergency C-section. So we said okay to that. And at that moment, it's like my world just kind of changed. All of a sudden now I had to go into the OR and everybody was all garbed up in surgical scrubs and um, the doctor, the nurse, the anesthesiologist, and even my husband were all wearing masks. And I was not able to lip read and follow what was going on. And I was like, oh, this is not good because I have three degrees in communication. So not being able to communicate was not where I wanted to be at that moment. But as it turned out, everything was, was fine. But I said when we came out, there's an easier way to do this, to solve this problem. So show us your mask. Here we go. So it's a regular so, mask. So this simple mask allows people to, uh, to see your mouth, they can see that you're smiling or they can see that you're worried more easily. It's an interesting innovation that will benefit everyone, won't it? Absolutely. And children like this on their health care providers because they're able to see that warm, caring smile when they're nervous or upset. And 93% um, of all communication is nonverbal, whether people have a hearing loss or not. So this is really important for, for lots of people to be able to communicate that emotion. We want to be able to see. Yeah. Game changer. Now, uh, after you invented this, you discovered that someone else already had, but it was not available on the market. Is that right? Correct. I thought that I had invented the mask, but I had not. So someone else had done that, but it was not out on the market. So I connected and made a partnership with a manufacturer here in the United States. And they uh, went through and did the R&D and the work on that. And so we're working together to get this mask out there. So have you started selling it on the open market yet? Absolutely, yes sir. We have it in hospitals, uh, children's hospitals. We also are on Amazon, so people can go to Amazon and pick it up. And uh, we encourage people to talk to their dental providers and ask their dentist to use it. Because many times dental hygienists will pull the mask down to speak to their patient. When you pull that mask down, it kind of mitigates mitigate the reasons that you want to wear the mask in the first place. Sure, sure. Yeah, it completely uh, undoes all the benefit if you uh, are speaking to your patient with the, uh, with the mask off. So um, in your case, you, uh, you are now hearing, uh, but uh, when you went through this experience, uh, did you, were you in a different situation as a result of something that's changed in your life since that time? Um, I, I have profound hearing loss in both ears. And even today, talking to you, I have profound hearing loss in both ears. So um, I do use assistive technology to help, and I'm a wonderful lip reader. So <laughs> that is why, that's why I like to do this. So um, many times, people uh, don't follow along very well. So you have varying degrees of hearing loss, from mild and moderate all the way to severe and profound. Yeah. And uh, I guess this is a benefit for everyone. I know uh, years ago, I started watching television with the captions on because I realized I was missing the joke sometimes. And so it gave me a way to, uh, 
figure out what I was missing. And so I think everyone, to, almost everyone, experiences some hearing loss. And this is a great uh, invention to help people experience, uh, have a better experience in, in the hospital, wherever, the, wherever they're there, or any, in any medical treatment situation. Um, I, I imagine it's been quite a journey for you going from your current position, or you know, from kind of inventing this all the way through marketing it. You've had to build a whole company. Tell us a little bit about that whole experience of starting from an idea and carrying that all the way through implementation. Well, to be really honest with you, it has a lot of ups and downs to it. Um, you do it because it's the right thing to do. You do it because you feel supported by your family and other people. And you do it because you know at the end of the day, so many people are gonna benefit from this. So it not, it focuses not on me anymore, but the focus is on the greater good of the community. One out of every seven individuals has a hearing loss to the extent that it interferes with their communication. But those one in seven are married they have children, they have grandchildren, they have neighbors, they have bosses, they have supervisors. So I really want to just go out on a limb here and say that everyone is affected by hearing loss. Everyone at some point in the day, you are interacting with somebody who has a hearing loss. They may or may not know that they have a hearing loss and they may or may not uh, recognize it, that it might have some limitations. So this is all about what is this problem? The problem for me is it's communication. And we want to be able to solve the problems of communication. And being able to lift really helps us with that. I really appreciated you sharing about the captain because we use captains at my house too. But it's good to read, see, and hear. Now you're using more parts of the brain and it, you're able to understand and process it and absorb it so much better than just hearing it alone or reading it alone, you're putting all of those senses together and it becomes a lot more meaningful. So a doctor can behind a mask say, no, you shouldn't do that. But if he's wearing a mask and he goes, mm, no, you really shouldn't do that, that's a very different message that drives home. So we're all about really trying to communicate the intent that a person has because not always what I say is what I mean. And right. what I mean not always coming through. So there's so many layers there uh, in terms of context and being able to see visually makes that message so much more meaningful and accurate. Yeah, it's a brilliant idea. And you've had uh, a remarkable career. This is an incredible invention. What, what is the most important lesson you've learned through your entrepreneurial journey? I would say perseverance, being able to contact and reach out and connect with others, knowing that you do need the help and support of other people. I've really reached into the deaf community. They've been very supportive, reaching to interpreters who work with deaf and hard of hearing people, as well as the medical field. But I also rely a lot on um, my career as being a college professor in teaching communication classes, having students to come in and we we'll talk about the theory of communication how communication works, what is public speaking about, and all that. But then it's like applying this in real life. And this is a great way of saying, okay, so you got this problem. Instead of just talking about it and not doing anything about it, really putting it to action and helping people. Um, because this is about making the world a better place. We truly hope that this clear map, because it would help so many people, will become the gold standard and will really help out. And some people are concerned about cost, but we have the hip pick code, which allows hospitals to get reimbursed by insurance providers for using this clear mask. So it really does take the cost factor out in terms of other competing masks. How much more expensive is it when, uh, than a regular, than an, a competing mask? Well, there are no other transparent masks on the market. So one argument is it doesn't have a competitor at the moment. Mm -hmm. But if we talk about just masks in general, you are correct. There are others out there. And they can be cheaper by maybe by about half. However, you have communication errors in the OR. You have 
difficulty where people are not taking their medication right and they're having to come back to the ER or come back. So our argument is that this mask is cheaper because again, you get reimbursed and you don't have those repeated trips back to the ER. You don't have people not taking their medication regularly. That The rate of return on your investment is, but it's a number that we don't know because when people don't go back to the hospital, we don't have a way of tracking that. Right, right. It's difficult. What is the price per mask uh, when purchased in bulk by a hospital? Um, we purchase these, uh, the hospitals can purchase these by the case or by the pallet. And for them, it will run probably right about 40 to 50 cents per mask. Obviously, a hospital goes through a lot of masks every year, but... Uh... It seems like that's a, a reasonable expense given all of the extraordinary benefits in terms of improved communication, not just with deaf and hard of hearing patients, but with all the patients. Absolutely. And this is FDA approved, so this is a better quality, a higher grade mask, uh, AFTM level one. So it can even be used in the OR. Uh, how long did it take you to get uh, FDA approval for it? Um, the mask manufacturer had the FDA approval for it, and I think it took them probably about three years to get that. So it's, it's not a quick turnaround period. Yeah, no, it isn't. So how long have you, been, how long ago, let's, let me put it this way, how old is the child that you had when you, uh, when you had this epiphany? My daughter, Sophie, is 16 years old. <laughs> okay, so you've been working on this a while. So when I said ups and downs, that's one of the things that I was talking about. Um, but you never know when that's going to be you in that moment or your loved one or a parent in an assistive living center. It can happen to any of us or all of us. So that's why we go back to the point that this is very important and that we need to, to persevere through this. But I think most entrepreneurs will tell you that this stuff doesn't happen overnight. I didn't know that when I started, and it might be a good thing that I didn't know. Yeah, yeah. I think that's true of so many projects in the world. If we known how hard they would be, we would never have started. So, that's well, uh, and I really appreciate you taking the time to be with us. I have just one last question for you, and that is, what is your superpower? I would say my superpower is probably my college education that I have, um, because all of my degrees were in communication, and I think it took all of them and all the different classes through the years, not just what I learned in class, but how that learning continued on as a lifelong learner to figure out, I just don't think that we're sent here to have problems that don't have solutions to them, that I need the wherewith and the know-how to figure out how to make all this work and to get the, uh, get the solution pulled together. So I would say the superpower is believing in, in myself with that education. Um, communication considered a liberal arts degree, but great critical thinking skills that go involved that are gonna help us solve the problems that we have for tomorrow. Sure, absolutely. Well, Anne, again, thank you so much for being with us today. Before you go, would you take just a moment to tell people how they can learn more about Safe and Clear and how they can connect with you personally? Sure, absolutely. They can go to our website, www.safeandclear.com. Um, they can email me at Anne, A-N-N-E, dot McIntosh, M-C-I-N-T-O-S-H, at safeandclear.com. And they can also look up the communicator surgical clear mask on um, Amazon. Fantastic. Well, and again, thank you very much for being with us today. We wish you every success in making this the gold standard for surgical masks. Thank you for having me. All righty, let's do some good. At Caring Crowd, we believe everyone has the power to make a difference. Through our crowdfunding platform for community health, we empower passionate people to drive real change. Whether you work for a nonprofit organization, volunteer, or want to get involved for the first time, you can post a campaign on Caring Crowd. Join us, because caring is where change begins. Thank you for listening. 
This podcast is available at youtube.com forward slash Devinthorpe. Subscribe to this podcast on Stitcher or iTunes by searching for Your Mark on the World. Every weekday, Devon hosts a CEO, celebrity, entrepreneur, or other changemaker here on the Your Mark on the World show to inspire and prepare you to make your mark. Devon is a champion of social good, writing about, advocating for, and advising people who are doing good. He is a Forbes contributor who is a recognized thought leader in social entrepreneurship, impact investing, and crowdfunding. To book Devin as a speaker, visit devinthorpe.com.